Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Marine Baptist Church. And our service for today is Begat. And I want to explain that this is a picture of the world. And these little yellow spots that you see are lampstands. And we're going to talk about what that means. But for now, let's stay. Oh, no, I do have um, an explanation. Begat is the Hebrew word yalad, and it means to produce and or bring forth. Let's begin this morning and stand and sing hymn number 107, Amazing Grace. Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His this is my story, this is my song, 
praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, ring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, lurking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Today's scripture is Galatians 3.16. Now to Abraham and his seed, were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this is a verse that's in the New Testament of the Bible. Dear Lord, we pray that you will help us to understand your word, that you will show us the knowledge that we need and that you will counsel us and give us the understanding and that you will prepare us for the roles that we have as your citizens in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. This is a internet page from Bible Hub on Galatians 3.16. And on the right hand side of the screen, it shows the different versions. And I did this because I wanted to see if all of them said the same thing about seed being singular. And now, there's, there's lots of translations that are available if you go out there and look, but, but we can see that there are five here, and it says, the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. This, this says, Scripture does not say, and to seeds, many, meaning many people, and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Jesus. And in the, the translations under this say the same thing. It's to the seed. Now, over on the other side of the page, down below you see the original uh, things that God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, 7. He says, then the Lord appeared to Abram, who is Abraham, and said, I will give this land to your offspring. And that land was, is the area that we know as Israel. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. So we have the, the promise of the land for the offspring, but we have the promise of the seed. This is a commentary on those verses, 
and it shows the same thing. And then I've got uh, the line drawn down there and it says it's singular. It's not a plural noun, it's singular. And, and, I, and this surprised me, okay? Because I didn't really pick up on that. But as I began studying this, I, I saw that and I, they're all in agreement on it. Now, when we study Jesus' lineage, and we've got that in the Bible, from Abraham or from Adam to David, and then from this, this is from David to Jesus. And King David, he was uh, a wonderful person, skilled and a good singer, and I think he was good looking and strong and a great warrior. And uh, his, his lineage uh, leads us right up to Jesus. So Jesus had that genetic stock. And, but it's important, I wrote in here, Jesus came from good seed. There were some real stars in their lives. But as good as all those people are, none of it is good enough for heaven. And as perfect a genetic specimen as Jesus was, he gave all that up. You, you're watching this, if you're watching live video, on Facebook page, Marine Baptist Church Sunday Service. We started having live video services when we began meeting together after the government gave us the COVID all clear. Since then, we have had 20 Sunday services and they are all available to you to view in live video format and we have uh, camcorder uh, services that that are available and and I put the pictures behind uh, the words and, uh, and it's organized a little bit easier for you to follow hopefully here's a calendar of 2020 and you see that in June we've got the uh, June 7th is circled all of these dates that are circled or the, the services that we have out on Marine Baptist Church Sunday service on Facebook. And I think you would be blessed as you watch these services, but you can see that I've got a, a green arrow with yellow in it next to July the 12th. And uh, that particular service would would benefit you the most as you um, if, if you're gonna get some more detail about what we're, we're looking at today okay go look at that but they're all important and uh, this is an index of the subjects I've got on, on the uh, right side of your screen there June 7, Ask, Believe, Confess, ABC. Uh, under that, Ezekiel. And I did not develop these messages according to some master plan. And there are some churches that do that. And I wait for God to show me what he wants me to teach. And on Wednesday night, when I go to bed, I start looking for God to give me the teaching. And Almost always, sometime that night between Wednesday night when I go to bed and Thursday morning, God will show me what he wants me to teach about. I pretty much don't remember the subject from one week to the next. My wife, Pam, keeps notes and puts them in her notebook. I have a folder for each service on my computer so I can go find out what I said if, if I ever need to. But I will go back through and find pictures that I used in other sermons, and I thought I might have done something with lineage begat in previous weeks. So I went looking for it and found that I had taught on C on July 12th. 
As I researched that, one thing led to another, and I ended up doing a review of all 20 messages. And I wanted to share the results of that with you today. Sunday, June 7, ABC. We talked about the ABCs of, I wrote prayer, but it's ABCs of our of relationship with God. Ask, believe, confess. We ask our Father wisely, believing, trusting in Him, and we confess that He is our God as citizens of His kingdom in order to receive His blessings. June 14, 2020, God led me to read the book of Ezekiel, and, and I did a brief survey of the book of Ezekiel, which showed us, among other things, that God recompenses, that's a word we've been talking about here for about a year or so, rewards, God recompenses us for the good things that we do, God recompenses for the bad things that people do also. June 21st, we talked about the word was heaven. And, and I, I showed us that God's way is uneven. Okay, He's not fair. But it's to our benefit because he gives us far more than we deserve. We give him a little and he gives us a lot. June 28, ways. God's ways are not man's ways. God wants us to adopt his ways. His word teaches us his ways. We have to learn his word to please him. Ju July 5, common. God has provided salvation to the whole world through Abraham, then through Jesus. Abraham was the father of the Jews, and Jesus is the father of spiritual man. Seed. Jesus is the spiritual seed, and we must give up our humanity in order to become spiritual man. July 19, teach. God wants us to teach his word. He commanded it in the Old Testament to Moses and the people. When Jesus went back to heaven, he commissioned his disciples, go, teach his word, make disciples who will then go and teach his word. Grafted, July 26, Jesus has become a new creature, human and God, because God's spirit is on him and we are to be in him and become new creatures also august 2nd we looked at tribulation the great tribulation is coming man has always had tribulation and we will probably experience tribulation in our lives but Jesus is going to rescue us, his people, from the great tribulation. August 9th, timing. God is the only one who knows when he is going to end our age, but he has shown us what to look for so that we will know when it is about to happen. He has given us a timeline of the last days. August 16, nations. The nations oppose God. They will oppose God until he pours out 
his wrath on them, destroys Babylon, and destroys her children, her offspring. August 23rd, Zion. Zion is Jerusalem. As the world gets crazier and more evil, God's people tend to think that Jesus must be coming soon. But Zion, a.k.a. Jerusalem, is the real indicator. That is, what is going on with Jerusalem is an important thing for us to watch because it helps us to have a feel for what's going on with Jesus returning. And let me tell you, um, we, we won't be here. Jesus' people won't be here for that. And uh, so, so, but still we can see events like President Trump um, blessing Jerusalem the way he's done. Uh, that, that is a tell. And uh, that's a good thing. We're supposed to do that. But that may lead to something else and the world responds. So, you know, it, it, our antenna go up. Jehoshaphat, August 30, 2020. Jesus gathers the people who are coming to destroy Jerusalem at Tel Megiddo, which is Armageddon. But when they have made the hour-long journey to Jerusalem, they will find Jesus with his saints, that's us, and destruction waiting for them at the Valley of Jehoshaphat. September 6, 2020, dust. Things are transitory. God's kingdom is eternal. This is a picture of the world and it's all dust and, and it's gonna go away. But Jesus is spiritual. We should spend our lives accumulating spiritual blessings because the spiritual is eternal. September 30. Jesus wants us to know the signs of his return. He wants us to be ready. But it's going to happen, and uh, at, we'll find out when we're on our way to meet Jesus in the sky. And the top picture is Jesus uh, among the angels, and he says, I will come again to receive you unto myself. And the bottom one is Acts 3.23, it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And that's Jehoshaphat. September 20, light. Jesus has called us to lighten the world. This little light of mine, that's not only a children's song, that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. God's Holy Spirit is in us and is the oil that burns and produces that light. September 27, oil. Revelation 6.6, 6, we read about the oil and the wine. That means different things to different people. To the world, oil is a commodity and wine is a luxury. To us, Jesus redeemed, oil is the Holy Spirit that we are anointed with, and wine is the forgiveness that represents Jesus' blood and, and our redemption. October 4th, Ryan. The word was Ryan. The name Ryan means little king. Jesus has made us kings and priests, and we're supposed to be good kings. He's called us to be kings and priests, and, and we're supposed to act right, not like the bad kings. Signs, October 11th. And we looked at the signs that are described, some of the signs 
that are described in the Bible and what we might be seeing today that aligns with the prophecies. October 18th, last Sunday. Understanding. Now this is a, a, a the lampstand, the candlestick, and it was in the wilderness temple, and it provided light, but it also represents the Holy Spirit in Scripture. And we talked about why do the heathen rage, which is in Psalms 2, and in this teaching we find out that they rage because they don't have God's Holy Spirit that Isaiah described in Isaiah 11 too, that would rest on the Messiah who would then give it to his sheep. These messages are about 15 minutes long. They're designed to show you what God has shown us in the Bible. And, and I would, I, I try not to have my opinion in any of it. I, I will share what I take as my understanding, and we all have an understanding, but these messages show the Bible verses that support the teaching. They are available for me. I'm one of you. I refer back to these verses because they will help me remember what Jesus and God taught. Matthew 19, 14. Jesus said, allow them to come to me. But Jesus said, suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus always seemed to have time for people as if they were his children. Luke tells the story of the blind man who heard Jesus and the crowd going by him, and he cried, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do? The blind man said, I want to see. Jesus said unto him, receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And he received his sight. Salvation is of the Jews. Jesus said, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Salvation is of the Jews in that Jesus was born of the line of Abraham, but he doesn't want us as genetic children. He wants us as spiritual children. Jesus was begat so that he could be the salvation, which is of the Jews, so that he could begat, so that he could become spiritual. And do you know what Jesus begats? Spiritual children. Call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven, Jesus said. I love my dad. My dad was a, a wonderful, smart, sweet guy. But I am begat of Jesus, spiritually born. I'm going to ask Pam to come now and bring us a reading from the Daily Bread. Today's reading came out of uh, our Daily Bread, uh, dated October 22nd, this past Thursday, and it's entitled Laundry Day. And the Bible verse is Matthew 28, 19, Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Driving through a low-income area near his church, Colorado past pastor Chad Graham started praying for his neighbors. When he noticed a small laundromat, he stopped to take a look inside and found it filled with customers. One asked Graham for a spare coin to operate the clothes dryer. That small request inspired a weekly laundry day sponsored by Graham's church. Members donate coins and soap to the laundromat, pray with customers, and support the owner of the laundry facility. 
Their neighborhood outreach, which dares to include a laundromat, reflects Jesus' great commission to his disciples. As he said, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit's powerful presence enables everywhere outreach, including even a laundromat. Indeed, we don't go alone. As Jesus promised, I will be with you always to the end of the age. Pastor Chad experienced that truth after praying at the laundromat for a customer named Jeff who is battling cancer. As Chad reported, when we opened our eyes, every customer in the room was praying with us, hands stretched out toward Jeff. It was one of the most sacred moments I have experienced as a pastor. The lesson, let's go everywhere to proclaim Christ. And the prayer is, Jesus, enable me to proclaim your good news today everywhere. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. You know, Lord God, we pray that you will make us spiritual beings as we believe in you and trust in you that your Holy Spirit will become, will come on us, filling us with your mercy and your love and your goodness, and that you will guide our steps and show us the path and that people's lives will be changed as we do the things that you've caused, called us to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you.